Hey everyone, welcome back to the Tutorium in Intensive English at the University of Illinois at Chicago. I'm Jordan, your grammar teacher. In today's module, we will be talking about modals of probability. These are also called modals of deduction or guessing about something about the present. Um, let's look at what we're doing today. So in today's lesson, we will look at examples of modals of probability. We'll learn the grammar rules for using them. And we'll practice a little bit. Okay, first, our first modal we're going to talk about is the modal must. Let's see it in, uh, in context. Becky must be here. Her bag is on the table. Trisha must be in her office. I can hear music playing. Jason must be in a meeting. He hasn't responded to my email. Now, if we look at all of these examples, we want to ask ourselves, why are we using the word must? Well, the rule for uh, this modal, um, particularly when it's being used for probability, is to talk about when I am 100%, almost 100% sure that something is true. Um, maybe I am 99.9% .9 sure. Um, it's also used if it's a very, very realistic possibility that this is true and that I have enough evidence to support my assumption that this is true. So for example, um, in our first sentence, it says, Becky must be here. Her bag is on the table. So I have some evidence that she is probably somewhere in the area. Why would her bag be there if she's not here? Similarly, in sentence two, um, if I am walking by Trisha's office and the door is closed, but I hear something in there, I can safely assume that she's probably in there. She must be in there. Who else would be in there? Okay, let's go on to our next modal. May, might, and could. So we have three modals for this one. Uh, let's look at some examples. Renee may be at lunch. She isn't at the front desk. Matt and Sally might drive to work. I rarely see them on the train. Katie could be sick. I didn't see her in the office today. If you can tell from the picture and from the question mark, uh, we use may, might, and could for something that's possible, but I'm not really sure. I'm guessing that this is the, uh, the truth. So for example, Renee may be at lunch. She isn't at the front desk. Okay, so she's not at the front desk. She could be in the bathroom. She could be in a meeting. She could be um, at home, who knows? Uh, but I'm guessing that she is at lunch. Um, same with Matt and Sally. They might drive to work because I don't see them on the train very often. It's also possible that they take the train earlier than I do. Maybe they take a different train. Maybe they take the bus. These are just some possibilities. And lastly, the modal can't. Let's look at some examples. Dave can't still be in class. It ended 30 minutes ago. Stephen can't be at lunch. He had two, lunch two hours ago. And Rachel can't be happy. Jenna ate her snack that was in the fridge. If you can tell 
from the icon, from these sentences, from the photo of the, ooh, no. Um, we use can't to talk about things that are probably not possible. I'm pretty sure this is not possible. Now, another grammar note, just a small grammar note. Um, when you are using modals, you should have an infinitive after your modal. Let's look at an example. So for example, uh, Becky must be here. Renee may be. Dave can't be. If you notice, we have a base form of the verb after each modal. When people say base form or infinitive, they are saying that this is a verb that has not changed. You'll also notice that there is no to before the infinitive. When you use modals, uh, must, can, uh, might, could, things like that, um, you don't add the to after. Now let's practice with some examples. So we have a scenario. Let's try to think of a possibility for what could be happening or what could happen. So it's extremely humid right now. It's extremely humid in the summer here in Chicago. Um, but when it's humid, we know that there will probably be a storm. So we can use a modal, like it might storm later today. Next, your stomach is growling. Growling is when your stomach is making noise. Like, <laughs> uh, so your stomach is telling you something. You must be hungry. You are, I'm 99% sure that you are hungry if your stomach is making noise. Go get something to eat. He's tired. Okay, well, he may need to rest before his exam. He may need to get a tea or a coffee. Uh, he may need to drink an energy drink. There are some different possibilities for him before he takes his exam. Chris drank a gallon of water at lunch. Now, that's a lot of water. Uh, so let's think, is she still thirsty? Would she still be thirsty? No, she can't be thirsty. She already had so much to drink. And our last one, Katie isn't speaking to Sally. We wanna think about what are some reasons why Katie wouldn't be speaking to Sally? Well, she could be angry at Sally. That's a possibility. I don't know. Well, that's all for talking about modals of possibility. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. Uh, in our next lesson, we'll be talking about past modals, which is very related to this lesson. So I will see you in the next video.